and welcome to another episode of Blake's Take, where I unpack customer experience in three minutes or less. Today we're going to talk about surprise and delight, when it goes too far. I was recently in Las Vegas teaching a workshop to about 25 brands, and some of the feedback I got in the workshop was, Blake, what do I do? My agents jump right to surprise and delight anytime the customer is somewhat peeved. And she was a little frustrated as a manager because of course you don't want every agent all day surprising and delighting because then it's not special, right? Also, it costs a lot of money to send gifts and packages. My advice to practitioners in customer service roles is to have some kind of strategy or parameters for when you actually do go and deliver surprise or delight. Um, and one example of this is actually a brand I was recently talking with. They are a content provider and they're actually keeping tabs on their competitors walls. So here's an example. A competitor did not respond to the customer on Facebook and the customer was very dejected that they didn't get a response. So this person that I know reached out to the customer on Facebook responding publicly <clears throat> and saying, hey, we have the product you're looking for. They then went ahead and sent that customer a huge care package with a handwritten letter and the product was actually for a child so it was written to the child with special uh, products inside that had to do with the content that this person was looking for. So this is kind of an extreme example of surprising and delighting when you're trying to win over a competitor's customer. Hey, you, if, if it's their loss, if they're not going to respond, it's your opportunity. But I would say back to just day in, day out uh, practitioner life, have a budget allocated for surprise and delight um, annually, and also have an open discussion with your agents about when to use surprise and delight, and have an approval process with the manager so the agent can present the scenario uh, and the, the manager can approve it. If you have tons of money in your customer service operation, maybe you don't need to have a manager in place to approve things. Maybe you trust your agents to just go ahead and say, say order flowers or order something special for a customer who's going through something specific um, or experiencing something that maybe they could use a little cheering up. So it's up to you. Either spend lots of money and don't have a budget allocated, let your agents do what they want, maybe like Zappos style, or have a plan, a budget allocated per year, and some managerial approvals in place um, to kind of create it, create uh, a strategy and, and prevent it from getting out of control. So that's all for Blake's Take. Until next time, thank you for watching.